Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. Like that? I'm just checking in on you. I'm wearing some sort of a golf hat. Didn't shave the head today. I'm looking like a bum. Um, We're filming it, which means I have a special guest, special guest slash movie star, star of the new hit movie, Drugstore June, (laughs) directed by Nicholas Goosen, produced... Huh? By ATC. Um, written by Nick and Esther Pavitsky. My guest, Esther Pavitsky. Clapping. Thank you. Thank you. Produced by Plus you. Plus one. Plus, Plus one. That's right. I'm here for two today. I'm two and a half weeks away from hopefully giving birth and surviving. That's awesome. And Thank- that's a that's like that's a good career move. Back in the day, that would be the end of your career. <laughs> they would all they would send you to Mexico for an abortion. <laughs> why why is it good now though? Just like more attention? Um no, I just think it, like uh it seems it's, stable. It's it's accepted. Yeah. We finally accepted that you guys make babies in this business. <laughs> And then we, we uh, you know, say what you want about the patriarchy. We do allow you to work after that. That's true. Yeah, you no, know? I do appreciate that. And I appreciate being able to work during. That's been a, a privilege. Have you been go- going out? Do- like, how close are you? What'd you say? I'm so- due in two and a half weeks. And I, and if it, she doesn't come, I'm going in and getting, like, That's, yeah, they're making her come out. Yeah. There you go. And then I- the big thing, don't listen to other parents. Oh really? Don't unless they're giving you po- you, and they, they, they give you positive shit. Listen to that. Okay. But if you get the ones like, how was it? Oh, wait till next month. Get them out of your life. Yeah, there's been a lot of incidences where I run into people and they're like, my birth was so bad, and they just start telling me all the, about blood and vomit, and I'm like shaking. I'm like, can you stop? It's really making me uncomfortable. But do you have Don't any? Don't you realize your pregnancy is about them? <laughs> <laughs> like, when are you gonna wake up to that? <laughs> That, all I hear when someone does something like that, I just think you're a horrible parent. <laughs> you don't hear your kid. They, their kid is screaming for love and you are just so wrapped up in uh, your own BS. But uh, I'm excited for you guys. man. Thank awesome. you. Well, my baby's father, who is in the room today, because as I told you before we started, in case you brought up anything about sports, oh, okay. I, I wanted to have a Boston sports expert in the room. Okay. But he has said that... You know, Boston guys, we do have an ability to talk about other things. You know? <laughs> I can't imagine like the that. the queers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Another ignorant things. But he says he was like, he wanted to actually have a rule where we don't talk bad about our kid. And I'm curious how you feel about that as like a stand-up comedian. Do you ever... Yeah, no, I would never do that. Really? Ever. I barely talk about my kids. And if I do, I make sure... If it's something cute or something like that, or I'm the butt of the joke. I would never do that. That's how I look at it. It's like, there's mean kids at school. I don't need to be writing them material (laughs) to then aim them at my own kids. And I also respect the fact that I was dumb enough to get into this business. They should have their own lives. And like, yeah, like I... My dad was a dentist. He didn't come home and like talk about filling teeth and shit like that. So like, I don't... You know, and I don't have any, like, pictures of me doing stand-up or any of that crap around the house. I just come home. That would be weird if you did, though. Yeah, yeah. I even agree. And what I'm... if I had the double point from the 90s, <laughs> my, my first headshot? <laughs> Letting you and you know that I was going to make it. No, I didn't. I never did the double point. <laughs> I wish you would have. <laughs> I wish I did, too. I wish I gave into it. I wish I, when I had hair, if I spiked it up, had the mullet, the sleeves of the sport coat pulled up. Do you think you wanted to do the double point or were you ahead of it already? Like you knew not to? I was beaten down enough emotionally to know <laughs> to just, I was just blending in. So the grunge scene was in. Dressed my, I dressed like you. You, really? Yeah, I had like flannels were in all of a sudden and everybody had to pretend like uh, they were getting rained on every day and were <laughs> upset. It was the whole Seattle thing. It was quite a, it was quite a departure from pretending everything was okay with a metal band. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my gosh. So what generation are you? What have they branded your generation? Um, I'm like a very classic true millennial. Oh, that's good. But in the movie, a lot of people think that I'm playing a Gen Z person, but I just happen to be a, a millennial that relates more to all of Gen Z's bad qualities. Oh, okay. So I kind of, I, yeah. What is Gen Z getting blamed for at this point? 
yeah, it's kind of like I feel like the more I'm learning about this stuff, it feels like it's always the same thing on the young, whatever the youngest generation is at the time. It's like they're lazy. They're that's it. The <laughs> they, older generation should just say we're scared and we're closer to dying. Yeah. And uh, sorry, we're lashing out at you. <laughs> Are you Gen X? On the metal side. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like I when, once Eddie Vedder and all of those guys came in and knocked all of my bands out of the, like I, I never felt young again. <laughs> See, I'm like a I'm like I okay. I also have this fear that I'm exactly what all of your stand up is about that's bad in the world like that's what i represent <laughs> including my comedy <laughs> that's also what's bad in the world <laughs> like i love britney spears like i did i trash britney spears no but i just feel i just there's just i'm just i don't know any of the music that you like like and when you bring it up i i'm like i have to like smile and pretend like i know it but i don't and i also what about when i start shaking you when i yell <laughs> and i yell what's wrong with you <laughs> that was... in the parking lot at the store <laughs> you don't know who crocus is what the fuck is wrong with you but i and then like you know i'll i'll i'm a white woman who will get into a customer service disagreement like i just feel like based on your... I, I'm, I'm amazed at that. What do you mean? Because I, as, as much as I have a temper and I'll fly off the handle, I do that in a, uh... no, I guess I'll do it in a store. Because I always wonder like, you know, it seems if there's like a fight, I always look at it like if you're having an, ar if you're, if you're having an argument, that's entertaining. So I don't mind you holding up the line. <laughs> you know, if you guys are having a good one, you know, and the heads start getting going, and even as white women, you're trying to be sassy because you've watched enough reality television. You think that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, as long as it's a good fight, I don't mind. But like my my thing, my big pet peeve is is standing in line between women checking in at a hotel. Why? The endless fucking questions. Okay. Where's the gym? What time's the breakfast? Is there a good coffee spot around here? Just no. Yeah, you... worry that they're going to get punched in the back of the head because they're women like i always feel like as a man i'm on the clock <laughs> like, like it's any... just like if i if this goes any longer the guy behind me has the right to slap me in the back of the head <laughs> that is a very different way that we move through the world yeah i'm right. not usually i mean i am a i am afraid of most things because i'm like five feet tall and especially now being pregnant i'm just like this i feel like a big egg waiting to hatch <laughs> and like someone could just like go like this and like i'll die but um i really am i've heard a lot i think it was actually miss pat who once said to me when i was doing last comic standing with her that it seemed like no one ever hit me before and that like she, maybe i needed oh my God. yeah maybe i needed that I, can I tell you something? I was talking to somebody about that the other day. There's so many people out there that need a good fucking beating. <laughs> that is such a horrible thing to say. It depends on who it is. I don't mean women. <laughs> I don't mean women. Like, no, you I just know. look at, like, some of these politicians. Like, you can just see they never took a fucking beating. You just see it. I remember one time I, I accidentally uh, got in a position where I, I uh, shook Bill Clinton's hand. Whoa. And I got to tell you, it was the softest... <laughs> Like, if you could make, like, I, it was, he, that guy had never worked in his life. I was, I was, it was beyond woman soft. <laughs> like, I don't even know what it was. It was like, like, it wasn't even a person. Like I, it, you ever, like, a horse muzzle? You ever touch a horse muzzle? His hands, this guy grew up in Arkansas. I mean, those fucking people have, like, dirt floors out there. I don't know what this guy did. He, it was, it was unbelievable. I just want to say I've had the literal exact same experience, and I mean no disrespect, but when I shook the hand of John Lovitz, I felt the same thing. Oh, yeah, John Lovitz doesn't work. It was so soft. <laughs> It was really, I was like, oh my God, I need to like get his routine. He's, he's so lovely yeah. to touch. I think he likes, uh, he's one of those guys that actually uses the bath in a hotel room. Wait, I do that. Oh, you do? Yeah. Cause okay. So I've, ne I don't take showers. I only take baths. And so when I'm in a hotel, I would be at the checkout line, like, or the check-in, you know, like, can I get a room with a bathtub? And then it's like, they're trying to charge me extra, but um, I have to do it because I- So if they try to charge you as extra, extra, <laughs> charge you extra, do you- I, look, here's the truth, is that my customer service disagreements have had to 
retire, you know, mostly because I've embarrassed my fiance so much that it's like it has to stop. And then also, no, 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 no. We got to get into this. What do you do? Like, how, how far does it go? Is it, is it a time thing that's embarrassing? I don't know. Do you do you have any? It's more of just like a refusal to let it go. Embarrassment. Like remember the pink purse return? Yeah, there was a purse return yeah. where all these incidents have names. <laughs> I like this. The, the pink. I just it sounds like an episode of your show (laughs) oh you should have a tv show I mean the pink purse incident (laughs) that would be a good title um but since I've you know matured in my mid-30s I'm really trying to be mature and you know let things go what what happened with the, the pink purse incident it's just I wouldn't let it go and then you know sometimes like they won't let it go either you know what I mean like some, doesn't that mean they won't let you win that but also like <laughs> they're getting off on it too oh you know like Ooh. this is not just me and my bad day like this is so you guys hurt. start snapping and then you start dancing <laughs> and this feels like a really musical theater here this now I like this show a lot more <laughs> um <laughs> she like it's just when you feel like we're going at it and again like everyone's everyone's playing their part because sometimes people are just you know they're not matching your level of psychotic behavior right but i don't you think i'm i don't do it anymore yeah he has good had answer train me. good answer <laughs> oh it is true i wasn't sure if you're just doing that to keep the peace i mean i'd say it anyway but it's also <laughs> you can be happily can't be married. Trusted. Um, all right. So, well, what I've always loved about you is I just always felt you had like your own vibe. Thank when you. You came out. It was just like you would you were different, and uh, you and Nick somehow turned this into a script. And this, the, you know, we, we've done a number of these. Um, uh, what do you call it? promotional things? Whatever you, screenings. The worst. I've only been in this business 32 years. What do you call those things? <laughs> S- screenings. <laughs> Q&A. And screening. what I have noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, but like, and it's why, you know, I love this movie and everything was I was watching this going, I don't think I've ever seen a person like you, <laughs> but I know that that means this is like this underserved, like demographic. And then like when we would go to like the screening, like you, your fans are like into you. People are like, I love you, Esther. <laughs> it's like you speak for me. <laughs> I'm done. There's a, it's it's like there's a love bordering like with a touch of almost emotional breakdown. What I'm just going. All right, this is what I see. I've seen. I mean, I've been around long enough that I know that like this is like a new voice of something that is uh, that needs to be talked about. So let's let's talk. A little bit about this movie that you were nice enough to get like all of these uh comedians in al's in it bobby lee is in it yes which you were very you you and him went at it at one of the q a's recently and it was very entertaining but it was also very mean i can't remember what was said but it was well, i was following your lead you guys were talking <laughs> about how horribly unprepared no. bobby was no, no, and no. that it was going to be a seven a 15 day shoot and then he showed up and it turned into 17. <laughs> And that's, now this movie has to be a hit. <laughs> because no. it went so over. No, that's not true. But there was, you know, with Bobby, you you never know what's going to happen. And he made it fun for I everyone. know what's going to happen. He's going to kill it. I love <laughs> yeah. Bobby. Bobby did a... Uh, He's so good in the movie. He is. He is. And not, uh, honorable mention here, uh, James Remar. Oh, he, are you... He played... He, oh, my God. He played one of my favorite movies of all time. Warriors. One of my favorite bad guys of all time. Not Warriors. 48 no. Hours. Really? Him in 48 Hours, his, his character Gans with Billy Bear, and not to mention that the gun sound in it, and Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy, and it's basically, even though it's a comedy, it's a straight up drama. Um, it, it's like, it's just, it's just this way it's shot. I watched it uh, last year. It still holds up. He's such a guy's guy is what I'm noticing. Like James Remar, when he comes up, like men go crazy for him. Like even yeah. Adam Sandler was like, you guys got James Remar? Like yeah. he's such a, and he's he was such a great actor and he, he's so serious and, and real and grounded. Like he was really great to work with. Yeah. Well, that's why everybody loves him because he, he picks these great projects. He's got Warriors, 48 Hours, Six Feet Under. He was in Oppenheimer. 
Oppenheimer, yes he was. Yeah. I finally just saw that. Everybody was in that. I know. It was so good. It was great. Yeah. I heard your we were talking about Robert Downey Jr. in it and how he made you believe that Superman could Superman's costume would work because yeah, I thought as I was just like I didn't recognize him for like three scenes. I was finally like, wait, that's that fucking that's Robert Downey Jr. I know I didn't Oh my god. I totally was on on the same page as you. No, I I like you know, like each generation has like an actor. That generation he's he's ours. And that guy was... Oh, interesting. Oh, dude, he was like... I'm trying to think my first son was either like weird science, back to school, he played the roommate. Then he did like less than zero and it's like, oh man, what? This guy is like... Uh, this guy's got some chops and everything. And then I can't remember if he did Chaplin and then had the drug problem. I don't know what. Kiss Bang Bang. Huh? Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah, he just was been like somebody that... Uh, and then he could do play Iron Man and do like, like a big you know Hollywood superhero movie and still crush that I don't know if you watch the Oscars but I was thinking like that's so how does that feel for him that everyone just jokes that he's a drug addict I'm like would you be cool with that I wouldn't do I wouldn't joke about that yeah he but I'd be cool with that I mean it's part of your story so you kind of got to take it but like yeah. it's also like the guy's been sober now for like 30 years. So to me, it just seems like a hacky joke. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's not probably too sensitive, hopefully. Oh, I'm not going to speak for the man. <laughs> Especially now that he has an Oscar. Um, <laughs> I thought he already had one. I thought he won one for Chaplin. But anyway. Um, and we had Beverly D'Angelo, who uh-huh. was so funny and just like truly iconic and it is cool to see the difference between like the older actors that we had and then like the comedians Mm -hmm. like how they do the actors their process is so serious versus comedians it's so not serious and i think both processes are like right yeah it's kind of like however you uh i'll tell you the the ones that amaze me are the ones that show up and don't even know the lines (laughs) and you're just like how can you fucking (laughs) actors or comedians or whatever like i did a um did an episode of Crashing. Oh, I love that show. Yeah, I love that show too. Uh, um, Pete show. And I <laughs> remember like the second day, they said, you're the first comic that's shown up and actually known the lines. What? Which blew my mind. I, I, I always thought that if you, if you show up for an acting gig and you don't know the lines, you immediately get fired. Yeah. Or they deal with you and then you never work again. I still think that's true. <laughs> I agree. And in fact, I also think that if you ever show up not knowing your lines, you will never do it again because the pain of that. I I did theater in high school. I know you're surprised. Um, and I didn't see you as a theater kid. <laughs> yes, I definitely was. But I, there was one day where we were supposed to have the lines memorized and I didn't. And like... It will never happen again after that. It was so... It's humiliating. And, like, it's just... Yeah, you're just letting everybody down. Yeah. And then there's nothing you can do to solve it because it takes so much time and effort to memorize something that there's no in-the-moment no. fix. It's so shameful. Like, that well, will how never... Well, how come you didn't know your life? I think I was just, like, 15 and... <laughs> That's you know, a great answer. <laughs> like I was I, just being fifteen, man. Yeah, girl. <laughs> I remember one t- a long time ago, me and this other comic were t- trying to start shooting some stuff, and we wrote this sketch, and we hired a non-actor, but we thought he could do it, and he showed up. I go, okay, here we go. You stand there. We're gonna start seeing blah blah. And he just goes, okay, what do I say? And we were just like, <laughs> well, yeah, man, you you fucking you say, hey, man, what's going on? And he goes, all right, all right. And, and and then I and then I said something. He goes, okay. Then, then what do I say? It's just like. And then I remember looking at the other comic. We just looked at each other like this guy doesn't know any of his fucking lines. Like and it just. And I get you're not an actor, but I think anybody who's not even in the business knows. You got to know your, your 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 lines. Yeah, it sounds like this guy maybe had a lot more going on than just not being an actor. Yeah, he did. But I mean, I have a lot going on. But like if somebody <laughs> says, hey, can you help me move? I don't show up in a three piece suit. <laughs> I show up dressed, ready to help somebody move. So what can you what can you um, as far as like um, talking about the movie without giving it away? Um, like how much of this character, first off, is are you exaggerating yourself? Is this 
pretty much how you are? Is, it, is there pink purse moments that I people can? I think it's it's like the exaggerated on all the bad parts of me. I tend to. I had a show called Alone Together for two years. That's on Hulu, and I. It, this is I would say is a little bit similar. Are you? <laughs> no, it just took me back to being in New York. Why? I don't know. Like I, I, I was just emotionally shut down, and I just you know be with somebody, trying to make yourself feel feelings, and you just were walled off. The just the words alone together. Alone together. Well, <laughs> it the, well, made the, you clutch your heart. <laughs> no, because I, 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 I fucking I hurt some people. I hate that in, oh. in, in trying to figure out who the fuck I was, and then also New York was all you know. Come to New York and be alone with everybody. So, anyways, you, you did alone <laughs> together. Sorry. Wait, let's explore what you just said. No, actually. no, no, don't put it on me. This is your interview. <laughs> but um, I tend to write, and I'm curious if you feel this way too. Like, I tend to write and like to express myself as like my worst parts of me. I like to exploit my flaws mm -hmm. um, just because I think it's sort of a reaction to when I first moved here and all the sitcoms were like the f the women have to be likable and you know the men have to want to fall in love with them and I think I just got that in my head and was like oh ew I have to do everything different than that and, and you had to have a lot of props. <laughs> I feel like sitcom women like it couldn't do a scene unless they had like they had like a prop in their hair. Yeah, like their latte. Yeah, and something. Lipstick. I don't know. Do you find people hold things in life? <laughs> I need to hold things in this scene. I will say that is what I struggle with the most in acting is holding things. Oh, I hated props. I know. I'm it like it made me like forget lines and like and <laughs> and you would like they would give you something that you knew how to use in your real life. <laughs> then as you're thinking of words, you'd start going like this with like a spoon or. something something like what yeah it's you got the line what are you doing with the I, I don't know I don't know what to do with the spoon oh, you were but you were great with the clipboard as a doctor in this movie by the way you and you are so fun to improvise well, I took a props with intensive class okay it shows summer. it yes. really shows when you watch um I should get the link to that from you because I need to take it as well tis the month of St. Patty's Day and here's a random related fact uh did you know that the odds of finding a lucky four-leaf clover are one in ten thousand I'd say that's pretty difficult. I'll be honest with you, I thought that was a little low. That was like more than one in a million. Fortunately, if you're a business owner or a hiring manager, you don't need luck to find top talent for your team. You need Zip Record Up. Uh, right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr, B-U-R-R. ZipRecruiter's brilliant technology leads you to a pot of gold of top talent. Immediately after you post your job, ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology starts showing you qualified candidates for it. Once you review your list uh, of the most qualified candidates for your job, you can easily invite your top choices to apply so they're more likely to apply sooner. Aren't you just a wee bit curious to see how ZipRecruiter can help you? Well, today's your lucky day because you can try ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. In fact, four to five employers who post on Zip Recruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Once again, just go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. But do you feel like in old dads, for example, like are you you? Are you worse than you? Are you someone else? Um, I was, I was, I would say it was all of that and mm. where I was like, um, yeah, the bad parts were definitely me. The, <laughs> the better parts were me trying, you know, the person I wanted to be. And then like, you know, uh, like running a business and kind of being that sort of guy, that aspect of Jack, um, you know, he's running a company and having employees and all that type of stuff was something that uh, I've never done anything like. The closest I've ever done something was, was maybe when uh, I directed, you know, just having to be in charge of like a crew or whatever mm -hmm. was the first time I did that. So that, that part of it was um, not me, but overall, yeah. Which is what's funny, because now I'm writing another one. It's like, all right, well, I already used me. Right. <laughs> so now, now I, I got to write somebody. <laughs> That isn't me, but it's fun because it's becoming like an amalgam of a couple of people that I like to imitate and uh, that I like and everything. Something you just said that it was parts of you that were bad, but parts of you that you wish you were, like that makes me think, oh, I never thought of that. I should do that. Like I should try to write who I wish I was. Yeah, understanding you. <laughs> yeah. Patient you. Yeah, like I don't, I can't even, 
I don't think I have enough creativity to find that, but it would be an interesting challenge. I'm also curious what, cause you mentioned that like having past relationships and like feeling alone in them and I don't know, I kind of want to Not know. all of them, I don't want ex-girlfriends to be freaking out, but I was like a fucking, a lunatic in, you know, Ron Howard clothing. Like I, they would look at me thinking <laughs> I was like, you know, apple pie and Chevrolet and I was a complete fucking page one lunatic. I actually am so comforted to hear that because I live with that too. Like where when I think about my behavior in my 20s as just like a crazy young woman dating, I, I'm i like, wait, that's so bad. Like, can I ever fully recover from just like how crazy and jealous and insecure and like stupid you are when you're younger? So it felt good to like hear a grown adult man say that too. Well, there's something funny about picturing you five foot nothing but cra <laughs> like crazy women like most guys that cr crazy women scare the shit out of men really yes because you don't know how to deal with like a crazy <laughs> guy as much as he's crazy it's like i can f I'll fucking grab something and smash him over the head with it you know or, or something i can run away from this person i'm faster <laughs> than him you know any you have a solution but women like a crazy woman you can't run away from this she's just gonna keep coming <laughs> she's fucking nuts like we've all like i don't know i just had like a crazy woman in your life and it's just it's like terrifying this it's is fucking terrifying because there's no boundaries to what they're gonna do yes. like what sort of like emotional damage are they gonna go for is this gonna be public humiliation are they gonna make something up are they gonna attack my property are they gonna try to kill me it's so bad that this is all just I'm finding empowerment in it. Like it's <laughs> I'm like, wow, we really can do a lot. Like No, that's the thing. Like uh, the, well, the thing about all of this talk where they now like when they're talking about the the male the, the patriarchy or whatever, like first of all, the patriarchy only works for a select few group of men. <laughs> like most of us are driving a truck for the patriarchy and then going home to a woman who may or may not be sane. So, uh that's what I will say that that's what makes what makes men funny is how little society gives a shit about whatever thing we're going through. Yes, I do enjoy that. That yeah, is funny. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious because like it's it's there's no uh, this. You don't check in with a guy. <laughs> He just deals with it until he keels over on a fucking golf course. That's essentially your existence. While the whole time you're getting, you know, your wife is sort of like directing the scenes of your life and being like, yeah, yeah, cut, cut, taking the headphones off. Yeah, listen, when you were talking to my mother, it, I know you were being nice, but it just didn't seem like you were totally there emotionally. And you're like, okay, yeah, got it. Got it. All right. All right. I don't have enough. I don't have enough pull on this set to stick with my choices. It is true. It is so, this is like what I've noticed from being in a long relationship with a mature man. Like, it is hard to get you guys to like say stuff sometimes where I feel like any little complaint, like if I stub my toe, I'm like, we need to talk. Like, let's <laughs> pull over and like talk this through. Well, at least you know you're a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, like I'm, the self-awareness is there. But like with him, I noticed early in our relationship, like he just would like hold stuff in and I almost, like, cause you guys are just so used to not. No, you would get gay bashed. <laughs> it's basically what happened. If you, if you felt anything other than like laughing or rage were basically acceptable. And then the only other emotion you were supposed to have was being fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was it how are you i'm fine i'm good everything cool cool it's, totally cool it's funny that fine is like top tier for a guy but for a girl that's like your worst nightmare if you hear that word oh fine yeah it's like everything's fine oh yeah no it's it's 100 percent the exact opposite yeah <laughs> especially if it goes out i'm fine god you know yeah <laughs> it's good leave me alone um all right, well, so let me, uh, something I was fascinated about <clears throat> watching this movie is uh, the jokes you were doing was sort of like your relationship to food mm. and everything and scarfing down cupcakes. Mm, scarfing down, I love hearing a man tell me that yeah. about my behavior. Yeah, just, just <laughs> shoving it down your little piggy hole there, <laughs> I feel crying like, yourself to sleep. I feel beautiful. Waking up with that, <laughs> that cupcake napkins <laughs> half on your chins, partly on your neck. Um, <laughs> Did you, what was that movie, The Whale? Did you see that? Did you relate? 
<laughs> was, was there any moment during your pregnancy that if you thought you got up, you were going to have that, you're just going to go into the white light? <laughs> I, so I've never had alcohol and like I've been sober most of my life and it's truly because like how out of control I feel around <laughs> like a sprinkles cupcake that I'm like oh if I ever tried alcohol and this addiction vibe transferred over like my life would be it would be well ruined. you got nowhere for the calories to go <laughs> it's well it's You'd be like a fucking kitchen fridge within a week <laughs> <laughs> those little floor fridges i just i'm like i have no self-control with my love for sugar that no one does thank you no one does thank you so much no one does i you know what i did earlier the, earlier last year i just started if i say something out loud i can make it happen within reason i don't mean like i'm gonna own the world i can't do that it's much <laughs> on a much lower level what do you mean? Like I'm doing my laundry today. I have to say it out loud, and then it happens. So I just said I am. I I don't eat desserts. Oh! I just. When uh, did you say that? <laughs> <a horror. laughs> Wait, when and why did you say that? Did something? I fucking hate going to the gym. I hate having man tits. <laughs> I'm should... orange. I don't need to be fat too. I mean, I'm already unsightly in shape. Most people don't want to look at me, so I don't need to be walking around like fucking fat and red. Okay, and but usually if if someone is to the point where they're saying out loud, "I'm done with desserts," that is like no, what? I don't eat desserts. Oh, I don't eat desserts. Like something bad happened right before, and I'm curious, like about that. Like, did you have like? No, no, I didn't. I wasn't no? like the whale making a pizza sandwich out of donuts oh, and shit. Okay. But like, I will say what's funny though is to say that when there's another man present. If you're on like a double date, they go, "When I get some, I go, I don't eat desserts," you know. It, and then they they feel pressure to not eat, have something sweet because that means they have a little sugar in their tank. It always goes back to being gay <laughs> with straight guys. Not gay, not having trace leche. You know, it's stupid. <laughs> it's dumb. It's like it's, it's delicious. No, I don't. I I I um somewhere I think with how far I pushed it with alcohol, mm. it then bled in. Then when I got rid of that something had to be like the rave has to keep going right yes yes so it has to you know i'm at 10 with alcohol so then wherever else i went it had to stay there so my cigar smoking got out of it so i had to like quit fucking cigars um which is an on again off again like do you know de niro's relationship with sharon stone and casino that yes, that's like me with fucking cigars like oh my god <laughs> you're gonna let him back into your life um <gasps> like with dessert i during the pandemic me and my wife definitely, you know, I started smoking weed and then ice cream sandwiches. Oh. Yeah. Like the, where it's like a, the brown cookie or like the chocolate chip cookie? Those brown ones suck. <laughs> they, they never, I don't even know what that is supposed to be. That That's not a sam. I don't know what that is I made know. Out of. As I was saying it, I didn't know what to call it other than the brown one. Yeah, the brown one is, like, that, that's the one I grew up on. And I, ne and I never even, they never tasted good and I still ate them. It was like Twinkies, never tasted good. Devil Dogs, never tasted good. It, they, they used to like dry your mouth. It was the driest shit with just a little hint of cream. <laughs> I know. It. That's what keeps you coming back for more. It's like they just barely... <laughs> Like they're breadcrumbing you yeah. into liking it. I, I am curious though, like M and M's, it, peanut M and M's. Oh, that airport one that you usually get for a family of four. Oh, oh yes, that yeah. bag. I would that's jerry like rig tub. like like a, a rubber band <laughs> around my neck and be like a horse. <laughs> I Oreo would, cookies. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, well, I'm not even having to ask and you're just. <laughs> Oreo cookies, uh, blonde ones, both ones, you know. Blonde ones. Blonde ones, the dark ones, like women. Yeah. I like them all. <laughs> they, call, they call them golden <laughs> Oreos. But yes, no, they are. The ones that are the same color as Jesus. They're, those are the best right? Oreos. So I call those uh, the clan Oreos. <laughs> Oreos, where they can't even. They don't like regular Oreos because it reminds them of interracial marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had an uncle who was like. In the clan? No, I hope not. I'm not sure. I can't really say. He was very old, so it's possible. But like when we would go visit his house in Wisconsin, his drawers would have literally like 50 Snickers bars. And like as kids, we were like, this is so cool. And yeah. then of course we found out that that was like because he was sober and his addiction had transferred like to sugar. So I do think that is a common 
Yeah, I gotta say, if you can get Pipeline. to your addiction while still lying in bed, <laughs> like that's not a good thing. I've definitely been there. That's the thing about alcohol. At least you have to get up to make a drink. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen the other things. You just had a pail of booze. <laughs> And you did like, you know, when you siphon gas to get it going and then you were like under. I have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, where can people, uh, where's this movie at right now? So we just did a month long run in theaters in okay. which you were at some of those screenings. It was really fun to have you. Mm -hmm. And now it's available digitally. Nice. Um, yay. Look we're, at you guys. We're streaming. We're on demand on Apple. You can rent or buy on Amazon, Vudu, everywhere. And like, I don't know how much you get updated, but we've been. I am completely out of the loop. We've been smashing all of the expectations set by our movie studio. So we have just been like crushing it on digital sales, theatrical sales. So the podcast fans have really been coming out to support this movie. I, none of that surprises me. Yes. I knew you were unique. I knew the movie was unique. And, and I'm telling you, when I heard those people at your screaming, <laughs> I <Ask> love you. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I feel seen. It was that whole vibe. And I was just like, all right, you're, this this is a whole like, that's awesome. You realize, you know, the odds of writing something, selling it, and then getting it into theaters, getting it onto something, and then actually having it do well. That's that's incredible. Thank you. It's very it is very it has been a, a long trek and thank you to you like for putting your name behind the movie supporting it so much and also yeah, showing up and being in it like that scene with you is so funny it's like an, it opens up our trailer it's the funniest moment in the movie obviously so thank you uh, well I, I think the whole movie is funny but I'm also yeah make sure they, they pay you <laughs> you know on this night this is that is why i'm here today actually well, this is also like the new thing the new thing is yeah and then you go back and they act like the, the your last hit movie never happened <laughs> you're like wait what did they rewind my life here <laughs> um all right so you can see it on apple did i do a half hour you can cut that part out all right i'm really bad with this i'm i you're apologize it. profusely for being so fucking late no, i just, no, it just went flying by um <clears throat> anyway all right people so the name of the movie is called Drugstore June, written by uh, Nicholas Goosen and Esther Pavitsky. Um, you can see it streaming now on uh, Apple, Apple, Amazon, Apple, Amazon, you... and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, my stamp of approval all over this thing. You're gonna love it. Hilarious and fantastic cameos as long as well as James Remar, Beverly D'Angelo, and huge. Who played your brother? He was fantastic. Brandon too. Wardell. Yes, and so also oh, oh, Haley Joe Osman is in it. He's so good. I know. He's yeah. cool as shit. He's really... I didn't even know it was him. I thought it was somebody from like Skinner or something. He had the long hair and stuff. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's the kid from uh, the Dead People shit. Right? <laughs> I watch movies. The Dead People. Uh, Sixth Sense. Yeah. Sixth Sense. That was the 90s thing. It was all about the surprise ending. Yeah. You didn't know if someone was dead or if they actually had a dick, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? What was that? Okay. The Crying Game. <laughs> I, I missed that one, but I'll have to go back. Oh, you want to hear something real quickly? Yeah. Hilarious. I went to go see Madonna with my wife. I went to Madonna this weekend. Right. So I, I, I thought she was going to have a band. Like, I had no idea, like, what was going to go. Like, she used to have, like, Jonathan Moffat on drums or, like, uh, Omar Hakim. So I'm like, she's, and she's a drummer. So I'm like, she's going to have a beast. It wasn't that. It was something else. So right as the lights go out, my wife goes, she goes, by the way, this is going to be the gayest thing you've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly was. But I was like, what? What are you talking about? Well, I mean, I, it wasn't the gayest thing I've ever been to. Oh, it was for me. I would say a drag. I went to a drag show one time at Ham Hang Hamburger Harry's. Hamburger Mary's. Ham Hamburger Mary's. Yeah, and it was like you know, it was like right there. Yeah. What did you and think Madonna of Madonna? Was like you know, you're up there. You're, you're the, you and the gay is like the, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a moat between it. <laughs> no, it's all around you at the Madonna concert. I know. I'm kidding. <laughs> what did I think about it? Um... I like the whole retrospective of her career and it was also like uh, like her career kind of she came out right as I was became a teenager and something so like it was funny like all her music was always on in the background because once again you couldn't admit that you liked Madonna as a guy in my town it was just like you know was she ever someone you had a crush on no um no interesting no I was more, uh, who did I have crushes on back then? Uh, no. 
Not Debbie Gibson. The one we used her as a reference in the in the movie. Lita Ford. Lita Ford. <laughs> Lita Ford. Joan Jett. Oh. Pat Benatar. Oh, okay. Uh, um, um, the girl who played Leather on uh, Leather and the Suede's on Happy Days. Janet Jackson. Different strokes. Oh. From different strokes on. Yeah, yeah. Then she kind of lost me, you know, when she got in uniform <laughs> with uh, Rhythm Nation. <laughs> and when she came out with the tank top and she was mushing the titties together, I was like, I like this. <laughs> I think, I think I'm going to get this album. It's not a lot of levels to me, Esther. Um, all right. Well, that's the uh, that's the podcast, everybody. Check it out on Apple. Um, Drugstore June. Starring the wonder, wonderful Esther Fabitsky. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the music. And we'll have a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, March 14th, 2016. How you doing? How's it going? How are you? Oh, look at you. Wow, you look great. Did you lose a few? Is that a new blouse? What did you do? You did something different. Um, oh, is there anything worse than watching somebody do that? You know, coming up, and they, they take the two women meet, right? And they grab each other by the, both hands, right? And then they... But look at you, and they fucking hold their hands out. I think I've talked about this before. Look at you. What are you doing? You know, secretly hating the woman because she looks better. You know, why can't you be like guys? We just look at each other. And, ah, that guy's a pussy. <laughs> ah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, Billy fucking cuisine over here. I want to try to make gnocchi this week. Or gnocchi. How the fuck are you supposed to pronounce it? Um, doesn't seem too fucking hard, right? So anyways, we got these old pants, right? Like everything in my life, it's fucking old, right? I'm old and everything I own is old because I bought it when I was young. Um, so I guess the Teflon or whatever the no shit, well, whatever, it was, it had scraped off over the years and was flaking up and somebody told my lady that it was getting in our food. So now, of course, oh my God, we got to get rid of it. We're going to get cancer. You know, we're eating Teflon fucking omelets, evidently. I don't know. I, I, I didn't taste it. My fucking omelets, omelets are uh, they're delicious. I didn't feel any, you know, crunchy. Like, wait a minute. What was that? What was that? Was that onions or was that part of the frying pan? I can't tell. Mm. It's such a similar taste. Eggs and parts of the frying pan. You know, I don't know. I figured, you know, with the amount of booze that I do, whatever that, that you know, Teflon that went to my system got eaten up by the fucking my liquid diet, right? But whatever. So now we got to go get a fucking frying pan. So I go, all right, you know, we 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 have one nice one, and then we had like three shit ones. So the three shit ones, I guess, were giving us cancer because someone who isn't a doctor saw saw the pants and told us that that was what was what was happening. So we threw those out. So no, I'm sure those are gonna be fucking hitting some octopus on the fucking head when they dump it into the ocean soon enough. And now I'm going to go buy some more, right? I already had what I needed and I threw it out. So now I got to go buy some more, right? Classic fucking capitalism. It's how it works. It's how we keep it going. It's how we keep the plate spinning. You go out, you buy what you need. And then when you have it, you throw it out and then you rebuy it. And the second people stop doing that, this whole country goes down the shitter. That's it. That's how simple it is. All these fucking stupid terrorists over there, you know, who th think they got to come over here and bomb us. All they got to do is just, you just start sending leaflets over here telling us not to buy stuff. Hey, wait, you already own that. You don't need to buy that. Keep the money. Treat yourself. Put your feet up. Don't go to the mall. Relax. Just send, you know, propaganda like we used to in the... In the wars, right? We we drop uh, we drop little leaflets. You know, I would love to read one of those. Is there anything, any fucking pictures of those wartime leaflets to try to get people? Like, I don't understand how the fuck you're going to do that. Like, I don't think I could ever fly over Yankee Stadium with leaflets telling people to become Red Sox fans. So, like, how do you during a fucking war when the country that's bombing your country is going to send you a leaflet? What the fuck does it say on it? Yeah, hey, sorry about uh, most of your relatives. Uh, anyways, uh, you want to come over to our side? We could get you a ham sandwich there, fucking smoky. Um, all right, let's see. World 
War II leaflets. Leaflet propaganda. All right, let's read a couple of these. Let me see if this would make you fucking switch sides. Go from Red Sox to Yankees or fucking Dodgers to Giants or fucking Avalanche to uh, the fucking Red Wings or uh, Michigan to Ohio or uh, Alabama to Auburn or uh, Democrat to Biden. You get it. Um, all right. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at this one. Why are you Germans still fighting? Now, that's that's no way to get the reader. The question is extremely difficult to answer. D- did they understand that these people spo- spoke German? Are you going to write it? Yeah, this is almost over my head, and I speak the fucking language. Uh, why are you Germans still fighting? And why are you Germans still fighting? The Fuhrer blew his fucking brains out next to his six of a chick there. Uh, the question is extremely difficult to answer. In fact, there is no reasonable answer to it at all. You go on fighting, although you cannot... I should really fucking click on the page here so I can read this a little bigger. Oh, and then it always disappears. Doesn't it always disappear? You just click on it. Where did it go? Okay, there we go. All right. You go on fighting, although you cannot help but realize that Germany is losing the war. Wow. Jesus. This would make me want to be, yeah, fuck these fucking assholes. Uh, you go on fighting, although you know that every day which the war still lasts means new destruction to your homeland, new danger, and new hardships to your family. You go on fighting, although it is clear that the only people interested in the pro- prolongation of the war, someone's going to read that in a second language, I can't even read prolongation of the war are the party leaders who want to delay at any price the consequences which the Nazi defeat is inevitably going to have for them personally. In other words, we're going to hang them. Uh, Remember that your dear ones want you back alive. Remember also that there is only one safe way home, the way through allied captivity. (laughs) You know, we had a lot of balls dropping these after we were firebombing fucking cities, huh? Yeah, you know. I know we just burned your whole fucking city to the ground and evidently you didn't die screaming in agony. Uh, The only way for you to avoid that is to uh, become our prisoner. Um, According to the Geneva Conventions, which has been recognized by Brazil, you will have the following uh, privileges in allied captivity. Oh, Jesus. This is the this is the classic checks in the fucking mail. You will be removed immediately from the battle zone. You will get the same food as allied troops. If sick, sick, you will be treated in the same hospitals as our soldiers. And after the end of the war, you will go home as soon as possible. Well, that's pretty vague. As soon as we uh, decide when you can fucking leave. Did anybody believe a word of that? I didn't. I wouldn't do that. I was like, you know what the fuck? You know what these fucking guys are doing? They want us to surrender because they don't want us to kill more of them. They're just going to fucking kill us. You know what I say? Kill as many of them before they fucking kill us. Oh, yeah. He speaks the truth. Um, that was me in a foxhole with a Boston accent talking to somebody who sounds like Hans and Franz. How'd you like that? You didn't think that was coming on the old podcast there, did you? Um, the fuck did I start talking about World War II leaflets? I was talking about buying a frying pan. Oh, yeah. So I get down the street. Oh, I'm driving down the old road there. Okay, it's a Sunday evening. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to knock this shit out before Monday comes around and all these assholes have to go to work. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm sorry. It's an election year. All these hard-working uh, Joe Sixpacks, they put their pants on one leg at a time. Um, anybody who's in my way is an ass. They're, they're a cunt, okay? And I wish I was more enlightened to realize that I'm just impatient, but uh, that's, you know... It hasn't happened yet. So anyway, so I'm driving down the fucking road, cruising along, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, they're doing road construction and it's just this massive fucking traffic jam. And I knew I had to do the podcast tonight because I'm doing some bullshit tomorrow morning. And I'm just like, can you can, can this fucking city? Can it just ever give you a fucking break? You know, I got to tell you something. All this shit where they talk about New York, you know, if I can make it there, I can. I got anyway, all that shit. You know, they're always blowing New York about how fucking difficult it is. I got to tell you, okay, as an outsider from Massachusetts, I've lived in both places. New York is definitely has 
its way of grinding you down. But there is no place like fucking Los Angeles, dude. This this fucking city is it's just it's brutal. It just fucking it never never lets up, you know. And then the whole time you're just baking in the sun of the exact same weather every fucking day and everybody in the east coast comes out here and they're like here for five six days oh my god this is great this is great yeah it is great for six days it's fucking great but every day waking up and that fucking sun sun sign sun burning down on your fucking head i'm telling you this fucking place and you combine that with being in this business that i'm in trying to fucking move ahead it is it is brutal it's fucking brutal and all that shit you know I can't tell you how many fucking New York comedians have moved out here and then moved back. I moved back. First time I came out of here, I couldn't take it. I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. I'm telling you, they're always talking, oh, you know, New York is so fucking real. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Bullshit. You couldn't take it. You couldn't take it, and you wanted to move back to your familiar surroundings to only be 20 minutes away from your grandmother's special sauce. That's why the fuck you moved back. All right? You dumb fucking leather coat. Oh, the pizza sucks out here, you know? <laughs> I'm telling you, if I had to vote which is the tougher city to live in, I would definitely say yeah, Los Angeles over New York. It is fucking, you know, dude, it fucking catches on fire out here. There's mudslides. There's fucking earthquakes. You know? In New York, what's great about I'm just talking basically trying to make it in show business. To live in New York in show business, which is, what is great about it is, is you can get on the subway and stand amongst a b- bunch of regular people, real people, right? And then you get to feel this feeling that that you're real, that you're not this big showbiz fucking phony who wants their own goddamn TV show. Yeah, New York, it's so fucking real. Look at that chair. Look how real that fucking chair is, right? Um, I just think because, you know, everybody's all mixed into fucking gather. You ride on the subway that these New York showbiz people, they, they just automatically think that they're they're... You know, everybody here is all plastic and phony because you come out to L.A. and the whole place looks like a fucking movie set, right? You sit there, you know, you'd ride on the subway and you, you sit next to some fucking, I don't know, some construction worker, union guy with his hard hat getting ready. And you, you start, yeah, yeah, I'm one of these guys. No, no, you're not. You're in show business. You're a big fucking phony, right? You're on your way to puppeteer school or whatever the fuck it is you're doing. Your little song and dance because you don't want to have a job. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said all that shit, but, you know, I I really shouldn't have said that having seen all the bullshit that I've I've seen, like, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders talking about, uh, I don't know what the fuck he was talking about. Like, I don't think it's, you know, a good way to try to bring black and white people together by talking about how white people have never lived in a ghetto, because automatically you're just going to put them into a defensive posture where they're going to, they're going to sit there and think about all the shit that they've gone through. And then they're then they're going to get upset. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I don't, generally speaking, white people do not live in ghettos. Although I think other races of people do not live in the middle of fucking nowhere off the Appalachian Trail, you know, washing their clothes in a fucking bathtub, sharing a pair of shoes. Some of that fucking horrific poverty that I've seen, um, that most of these fucking politicians will never see. I don't think. It's one of these fucking politicians. They should go on the road and open for a fucking comedian. Who's traveling to all these different things. You will see shit you can't fucking believe. You'll see levels of poverty you can't fucking believe exist in this country. Um, I don't want to name cities, but uh, there's some places down south. Jesus Christ. I remember one time I, was, I drove from Indianapolis to Nashville, and there was some place in southern Kentucky. I was running out of gas, and I pulled over, and the fucking humanity. My God. I swear to God, there was something in the fucking drinking water. I've never seen it. It was just like, how do I describe these people without just absolutely insulting them? Um, I don't know. It was just like, uh, you know, when somebody's like so dumb, you get nervous. You know, they start talking to you and they're looking at you and they're, you're, you can tell they're just smart enough that they know that you think that they're dumb and you're trying not to fucking give it away. You know, so you just kind of put your eyebrows up like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You try to get out of the fucking conversation. Yeah, it was like an entire gas station of that. Even the person running the gas station. Um, And this was off a major highway. You know, there was a subway. 
you know, you know, when you, you drive in the middle of nowhere, you don't ever go into just some fucking, you know, mom and pop place. You don't want to do that. What you do is, is you stay, you stay brand loyal. You pull into the McDonald's, right? You get gas at the fucking Sunoco or whatever. You keep it fucking, yeah, you want to get breakfast? Let's, you want to try the mom and fucking pot place where everyone's going to fucking turn around and look at you? Or are we going to Denny's? You know? Um, anyways, I really should be talking about politics because I, I literally do not watch any of it. Um, I know it was all that bullshit with Trump. I don't understand why people won't let Trump speak. And how you feel that that's going to derail his campaign. I think, if anything, it'll just strengthen it. Um, I'm sure there's probably plenty of Trump people that don't like what Bernie Sanders or Hillary's saying. They're not going in, in there and literally disrupting the whole fucking thing. Right? I don't know. It just seems stupid to me. He's, he's a fucking reality TV sh- show star. Just let the guy talk. Who gives a shit? He's not really saying anything. He's appealing to some people. Who the fuck votes in a primary anyways? Aren't you guys like me? I vote once every fucking four years. I hate to say it, but I do. I vote once. I vote for president. That's who I vote for. And I always vote for the fucking third party person. Although I don't know about Bernie Sanders. I don't know if I'm going to fucking vote for this guy. I'm just sick of, you know, hey, you know, we're going to take all the money from fucking these 10 people and give it to all you guys because all you guys deserve it, right? None of you guys are lazy cunts who don't want to pull their own weight. You're all angels. You're angels. And everybody up there is devils. Right? That dumb shit. It's just as extreme. It's it's fucking Donald Trump to the left. I can't listen to any of it. And then sitting right in the fucking middle, drafting behind both of them, is old fucking squarehead herself, Hillary Clinton. Huh? She's going to fuck. She's going to go right in underneath. Right in underneath. She's going to get in there, and you're going to have to listen to that fucking busted trumpet for fucking the next four years. <laughs> fucking filthy, filthy family. I don't like any of them, all three of them. You know what? You ever see on the Donald Trump show when he does like a combo firing? You know what? You're fired, you're fucking fired, and you're fired. That's what I would like to do with the three of them. Toss them in the fucking... I can say that because I only vote once every four years, and I do not watch the debates. All right, so you know I'm standing on firm ground here. I'm such a dope. Hey, you know what I did do? Um, God knows it wasn't read something. Uh, <laughs> I um, I watched on Netflix. I watched that Ukraine documentary, uh, Winter on Fire. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things where I was just like, Jesus Christ. I knew I wasn't politically active, but watching what these people did what they turned around i'll I'll try to give you a simple version of what happened which you know with my brain that's all you're going to get is basically what happened i guess around 2003 2004 uh there was some fucking russian dude pro-russian dude he claimed that he won the fucking election and they're like no you didn't you piece of shit you rigged it and they proved it and he got bounced well in 2009 the same dude comes back And guess what? He wins the election like that wasn't corrupt. So anyways, the Ukraine has a chance to join the European Union, right? To start being more like a European country and for once and for all, get out from underneath uh, whatever you call whatever Russia has, a dictatorship. So the fucking Russian dude who allegedly got elected legitimately, you know, listens to the people and they say that that's what we want to do. We don't want to take a step towards Russia. We want to become part of the European Union. We want to have a future here like um, what we see going on in Western Europe. And all of the fucking politicians go, you got it. All right. The people have spoken. We're going to do what you said. And what do you think happened? Right in the midnight hour, they gave me the old right there, Fred. They're like, yeah, you know what? We're not signing that. And uh, we're going to go hang out with old Vladdy Daddy over there, Putin. Vladimir Putin, and then uh, we're going to fucking shoot 18 holes of golf with him, and we're going to sell out your country to the Ruskies. So, started off this whole fucking revolution. I'm not going to say what the fuck. I mean, you got to watch it. It's unbelievable, but, um, you know, I mean, it's not like it's not in the news. I mean, they ended up winning. They somehow ended up winning, and these these fucking people had no weapons. They were just getting shot at. What, what I don't understand 
I mean, I do understand it, but I, 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 there's no place in the world where you can protest. You can't do it. You protest, cops show up, and they beat the fuck out of you until you go home. And they arrest a few, and then that's it. Every, what happens in this country, this country with all of its home with a free, home with a free, freedom of speech, you know, those fucking Occupy Wall Street people, right? They come down there, they beat the fuck out of them, and everybody knows the old trick. The same shit that they, was, they were claiming they did in the Ukraine, where basically when you have a peaceful demonstration, it's like, well, fuck, we can't beat the fuck out of them. What should we do? They hire a couple people to go down there and pretend to be the protesters. They throw a couple of fucking rocks, and then the, 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 the cops go nuts. And then on the news, they're like, the, the protesters started attacking the police. You know, the police were just doing their job. Blah, 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 blah. The police's job is to go down there and beat the fuck out of them. All right. Isn't it? Isn't that what it is? Oh, Jesus Christ, Bill. I don't know, Bill. What, what do you know? I don't know. That's, that's kind of what I got out of it. I got out of it that um, it was an amazing documentary that these people actually, with basically no fucking weapons, and just, you know, died, lost their eyes, had all these horrific fucking injuries, got kidnapped, disappeared, all of this horrific shit, and they were able to... Um, Hold them off for a while. So then the fucking Russian guy ends up having to leave, right? He fucking leaves. And then, yay, we did it. He's a jolly good fellow. It's all fucking over. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this this other revolution starts of people who are pro-Russia. <laughs> so once again, all they did was they just had Russian troops pretend to be Ukrainians and say, wait a minute. We don't want to be free. We want to be oppressed, right? So now I guess they they got to fight that thing. And since the, since the documentary been made, like six thousand Ukrainian people died. But um, well, I don't, I don't understand why. Uh, if you just look at the United States of America, the amount of money you can still make if you're up on top, the amount of taxes you can get out of paying, the amount of perks that you can fucking have, and just pass it on to the middle class. I don't understand why, like why Russia still does the whole fucking uh, dictator thing or why any country does. Just set it up the way we set it up. You pretend that people, you know, you give them, you know, you let them be as free as they can be. You know, you, you, you do the whole rhetoric, and you know, then, but basically there is still a ruling class and you don't have to pay your fair share and all that fucking shit it works out. And we know you're doing it, but as long as, you know, you let us drive down the street in a convertible, you know, listening to some tunes, man. I mean, somebody's got to run it. I don't want to fucking do that shit. You know, all of a sudden make decisions. I don't even like running my own website. There's no fucking way I could be sitting there making decisions for a whole goddamn country. I don't want to do that. You know, what? Uh, what, 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 is, what is that like every fucking day waking up? Another goddamn problem. That's why I think that's, that's why you can't have a dictator. That's why they're all so brutally mean. After a while, they just get sick of answering questions. Why? What's the problem? Where? I just well, fucking shoot them. All right. I, I don't. I don't care. I said fucking shoot them. All, arrest them. Put them in jail. Fuck! I got to do everything around here. I'm sick of hearing about it. Um. Anyways, so if you get a chance, <laughs> all I'm trying to say is, if you get a chance, check out. Uh, Ukraine, winter on fire, and um, I don't know. I, I sh- you should really start paying attention to politics more, but I, I just think it's all bullshit. I can't, I can't sit there and listen to it. I start screaming at the fucking TV, um, and I get all fucking upset. So w- why would I do that? And then I end up with three fucking options, none of which I want. You know, I do have to tell you, watch an old fat boy there from New Jersey. Jesus Christ. The look on his face when he was fucking listening to Donald Trump. That was the funniest fucking shit ever. That looked like a shotgun wedding. <laughs> and all he was thinking is, how the fuck, can, how the fuck do I, how did I get myself into this? How do I get out of this? You know? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. How much did he fucking binge eat that night? Poor guy. That's really bad. It's got to be, you know what sucks about being fat is people just know it, you know? You can't hide that shit and just boom, they just fucking right on it. 
You know what, me? Oh, I guess me. I'm a bald-headed motherfucker, so I got that now. But when I was younger, well, then I had orange hair. Orange, then turned red. Yeah, you know, I kind of got shit the whole time. You know, if I really look back at it. Um, all right, save you just some regular brown hair, brunette, fucking, you know. I'm just, you know, when you think about Chinese people, right? Because they, don't they, are there any redheaded, like naturally redheaded, naturally aspirated um, Chinese people? Hang on a second here. Natural red head Chinese. Nine natural redheads from different backgrounds. The forever war. Why a Chinese girl has red hair? Well, because there was a fucking military base nearby, I would think. All right. The forever war. Why a Chinese girl has red hair? When you zoom out of history to the level where empires rise and fall and people migrate, conquer, collapse, and absorb and disappear, you find that the story is always the same. That the what? The tall stock? Tie stock? The original stock is light, non-black hair, non-brown eyes, fair skin. Wait, am I on a racist website? <laughs> what the fuck am I reading here? Um, the others are darker. The others are weaker, but breed faster. Oh, there we go. I saw the red flags. The fuck is the name of this website? Koanic soul, life to the Neanderthal, death to the void. Christus Rex, the forever war. Why a Chinese girl has red hair. Oh, God. The fucking internet is amazing. It's just the fact that it just gives every, including me, just a bunch of fucking dopes. Why are blonde and red hair colors not seen? Can an Asian and a natural redhead have a redheaded Asian? Look at this shit. The redheaded Chinese girl. Asian red hair on Pinterest. The world's first Asian redhead. So I'm going to go out on my limb and say that they don't, they don't have any blondes or any of that type of shit. So I was just thinking, do you think that people get less shit? Like, what do you get bullied for? In uh, in China. Oh, God, please let there be some fucking native Chinese people listen to this. What are the t- Give me the top fucking ten reasons that Chinese people get bullied in China. It's probably the usual shit. Economic. It's going to be looks, right? There's always going to be better looking, mediocre, and then there's always going to be some poor bastard coming down the street. You know, something fucking happened. I don't know. Something's going on with his nose, his fucking ears. There's a, the kids, they'll, they'll, they'll find something. You, but you would think, you know, if everybody just had the fucking jet black hair, and maybe I'm more overly sensitive to this because I just came, you know, I came in the, I came in the world with a bullseye, right? Right there. There you go. What the fuck is that? Get it, right? <laughs> um, this has been a fucking crazy podcast, huh? I don't, and I don't have any advertising yet. I, this is usually the time that I tap out and I start fucking reading, but it hasn't come in yet. It has not come in yet. Let me see. I'll look it up right now. See if I got it. Ah, why do I always have 50 fucking windows open? Oh, I got a French book here that I was reading. I wasn't reading. I was listening to it. There's a book, something about a wolf that wanted to change its colors. I've gone 15 or 16 straight days on uh, Duolingo. Ask me to say something in French. I can't really, but you know what? I can read it pretty well. Um... For I know that that means for children, poor enfants, children. All right, what am I doing? I'm completely losing my train of thought here. Oh, fuck, here's something. Here's a window. This is the amount of shit I look up. One window, I have French school books, all right? And then the next window, I have Critical Engine opened up on uh, Wikipedia. I was talking to Paul Verzi because we're doing this tour, and I was saying, like, all right, these are going to be like four or five-hour drives or we could rent a small plane, but it's going to be maybe two, two, and Paul's me, I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't like small planes, starts freaking the fuck out, right? Like small planes thinking it's like a Chevy Chevette, it's a piece of shit, like it's not, it's going to die. And I was saying like, dude, it's going to be a dual engine, we're going to be fucking fine. Uh, you got two engines, I mean, the odds of them both fucking failing at the same time, and one of them can still fly the plane, you're fine. This is what I believed. But then I started looking it up, because I was trying to give him some information I was saying, like, look, I mean, I don't 100% know this shit, but this is what I've, I've basically been told. And uh, I started looking it up. 
And evidently, uh, one engine, for the most part, is more critical than the other. And also, when one engine goes out, it isn't like you just keep flying it normally. Well, you know, we still got one. We're good. Like that, obviously, you know, it, it, it fucks with the, not the balance. What would it be? I don't know how to say it scientifically. It's not a jet engine, so there's no, like, thrust. Is there? Oh, Jesus Christ. Can you believe I have a pilot's license? Fucking unbelievable. All right. Um, let's read this here. Uh, the critical engine of a multi-engine fixed-wing aircraft is the engines whose failure would most adversely affect the performance or handling abilities of an aircraft. On propeller aircraft, there is a difference in the remaining yawing, and that's just the nose going right to left, moments after failure of the left or the right outboard engine when all propellers rotate in the same direction due to the P factor. And I was like, what the fuck is the P factor? It has something to do with like when you're flying straight and level flight, okay, your propeller blades are, um, you know, they're, they're, uh, you have the angle of attack with the wind. It's basically coming straight. You're perpendicular to the angle of attack of the wind. That way you are getting the most bang for your buck with the, for the work that the engine is doing with the propellers. But the more you angle nose up or nose down, the more the wind, the way it's hitting it, affects the performance. It's what I sort of believe. I got all this mumbo jumbo in my fucking head. I have no idea. But I had no... I, so I started reading more about this, and there's all these fucking debates. You know, I was always of the belief that if you had two engines, if you could afford two engines, you buy that fucking airplane because... You know, the engines run independently. So you got two fucking engines. What are the odds of both of them? One fails and then the other one fucking fails. You know? But it's, it's, it's got to be almost zero. However, there's all these... Th- th- I, you know something? I started to read about it. And there was all these debates where... At first, it was obviously believed that, yeah, more engines is better, is safer. And then somewhere along the line, somebody did a study and saw that more fatal action... Uh, actions more fatal accidents happened in dual engine aircraft and people were going like, Oh, and then it, so maybe a single is better. And then that person came back and was like, no, you weren't hearing what I was trying to say. I was actually saying it was safe. And then it doubled back on itself. And I have no fucking clue what is safe. But what I did learn in it in a very layman kind of way was I had no idea that, um, I mean, it does make sense if you just have one side working You know, that it'd be sort of pulling that side along of the aircraft more so than the other one, causing the other one to drag. And you'd have to, I don't know, crab your way into the fucking wind. I have no idea. But all I know is I was reading, it says if one of your engines dies and the other one's still going, you obviously have a much, they said a much better chance of making it to the airport. They didn't say you would make it there. And uh, which here's my question to anybody out there who might know this shit. On a, on your average twin engine airplane, can bo- both engines independently fly the airplane? You know what I mean. With one quit, do they both have the ability to uh, get basically get, get have you flying fast enough where you can still maintain lift? You know. Because then I was then thinking like, okay, well, if they went from one to two engines, you know, you're adding more weight to the aircraft. Well, I guess you'd build a bigger fucking plane. Sorry, I'm trying to do this math in my head. You build a bigger fucking plane. But my thing is, is do they then go, oh, because of on certain aircraft, because it's a cheaper twin engine, it's that both engines in unison have enough power so you can maintain lift. But if you lose one of them, the other one can't still give you the 100% of the lift that you need. You actually only have like 60% if you still have the critical engine or only 40% if the critical one goes out. Like I, I have no idea how that works. All I know is it scared the fuck out of me. That's all I can tell you. Um, all right. Isn't it amazing the amount of topics I can talk about that I have no fucking idea? It's incredible. We're, we're, we're going to be doing some more here in, in the last half hour of this podcast. Um, I guess now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say that I'm going to stop here and read some advertising. I don't have it, but uh, you're going to hear it now because uh, you're listening to this in the fucking future. And there you go. Back to the podcast, you cunts. In the future. All right. Um, 
Oh, I didn't even finish the fucking... I'm back. We're back after the advertising. We are back, I guess. Did I read it? Did I sound good? How much did I stumble? I never even finished the frying pan story. So I get all the way down to the fucking frying pan thing, all right? And we already have like the regular, whatever, 10-inch one. So I want to buy the 8-inch one that matches. And, of course, the only way to do that is I have to buy the whole fucking set. You know? And I was just like, you know what? Fuck you. And I bought one of those little pasta cutter things, and that was it. And I fucking left. And I could, for the life of me, couldn't understand. One of them was nine ninety five. The other one was 21 bucks. And I sat there for 10 minutes holding both of them, trying to see, like, does it handle better? How is this one more than twice the price? I don't know, Bill. Why would you think it's interesting to us? I don't know. I'm trying to fill up a fucking hour here. Um, by the way, by the way, I got some. I have. I do have some dates, and I will never again announce cities um, that I that I'm saying. You know, we're working on it. I'm never going to do that again. Like I said with I said with Buffalo and fucking Syracuse because that hasn't worked out yet. Now everybody's like, dude, what the fuck? You said you were coming there. I shouldn't open my big yap. All right. Um, I am coming to Albany. I do know that. So people in Buffalo are like, dude, that's like a four-hour fucking drive. I know. I know. I'm sorry. All right? I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out. All right. Here we go. On March 25th, I'm in Riverside, California. Riverside, which I believe is the beginning of the Inland Empire. Or maybe it isn't. I have no idea. Um, on the 26th, I'm at the Terrace Theater in Long Beach, California. Unbelievable honor to be playing the place that is the place where richard Pryor taped live in concert where he had the red shirt the black pants and the silver shoes i will be standing on that stage i'm sure they redid it since he's been there you know so i won't be standing on the exact same floorboards but i will be within the same structure i'll be standing in the same place where he did stand-up comedy to me the greatest stand-up comedian of all time on the 22nd of april i will be in st louis uh, the, oh, my God, Yannick. Uh, on the 24th, here's a great one. I will be in Iowa, in Ames, Iowa. 22nd, St. Louis, Missouri. And the 24th, I'll be in Ames, Iowa. I have not been in Iowa since I did the Rich Bitch Tour way back in 2004. Um, speaking of which, did anybody's the, one of the guys I did the tour with, Don L. Rawlings, did you see that TMZ video? The guy's getting breakfast. He's got a $12 check. He goes outside to have a cigarette. He leaves his bag inside, and all of a sudden they came running out in Philly, screaming at him, thinking he was, he was, he was dining and dashing. Or chewing and screwing, dude, as we used to call it in Boston. You know what I mean? It's fucking unbelievable. Unbelievable. He ends up getting in a big fucking fight. And all this. He's got his bag inside. They won't give it to him. Um... According to the shit that I read, it's just fucking unbelievable. And I can tell you that as a white guy, that would not happen to me. That would not happen to me. Um, that, that was that was fucked up. Definitely fucked up. And uh, you know what? It didn't happen in Boston, all right? All you fucking haters. It happened in Philly. See? It's all around. Um, you know, it was funny. Donald threw that punch and the dude caught it. The next time I see him, I'm going to tease him about that. I wouldn't do it now because it's fucking fresh and it was bullshit. I can, I can definitely tell you as a white dude uh, that, yeah, that not, would not have happened to me. That's a complete racial profiling incident. But it was that fucking dude leaned back and just caught it. You know? You ever see a pitcher just catch a fucking one that comes right back to the mound? He did that, but with Donnell's fist. Um, anyways, uh, plow it ahead. Uh, May 7th. Orlando, Florida, May 8th, I'll be in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, Cleo, what are you staring at me for? What's the matter? I'm not, I already gave you F-O-O-D, so don't even look at me like that. I already took you out. Um, what, you just want attention, buddy? You getting lonely over there? Huh? All right. Fucking dog is so needy. All right, Portland, May, June 4th, 2016. I'll be there. Uh, and I also know I, in the early April, I got a bunch of Canadian dates. Um, they're all up on my website, billbird.com. Um, so anyway, speaking of dogs, I kind of tweeted about this shit where, um, you know what the fucking dog I have the biggest problem with? Like their owners never have them under control. I'm not blaming the breed here, but there's just something about the fucking 
the owners and how hyper the dog is, is those fucking giant poodles. There was another one today. I was at the supermarket. This person had tied it up outside, and it's just literally outside the fucking supermarket the whole time. Row, 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 row. Just would not stop. Sorry, I get my dog all amped up. Um, those fucking dogs are insane. I don't know what the deal is with them. They, they, they I think they like. They're kind of like greyhounds. I really just think you need to run them around a fucking track for an hour every day just to get them to get it out of their system. But they got like that perm going on, so I don't think anybody really thinks it's an issue. Cleo, what are you doing? You're going to distract me on the podcast. You can't be this adorable right now. Okay, for those of you who don't know anything about pit bulls, they are like the most needy fucking like love bugs. They're ridiculous. Like she just wants to crawl up here and fucking put her head in my lap and go to sleep. You know what I mean? She's not over in the corner fucking doing some prison workout, thinking about, you know, people she wants to kill. Isn't that right, buddy? Now that I've stereotyped giant poodles, I'm going to try to undo the damage with pit bulls. Who's getting who? My dog would try to rip your face off if you came into the fucking, um, into the house. She fucking barked at a guy yesterday, and I actually loved every second of it. I was sitting in my Prius, on these mean streets of Los Angeles, <laughs> downtown Hollywood. And uh, some fucking degenerate came up to the window. And uh, I don't know what the fuck. He's asking for money or booze or some shit. Uh, and my dog just fucking flipped out, flipped out. And the guy jumped back and everything it was great. It's like having my own security. Um, and the guy was such a fucking alky. He backed up off the car and then still mimed like, I'm, I, I want a drink. I'm trying to get some money for drinks. <laughs> I just, you know, I told him to beat it. Every once in a while, I tell him to beat it, you know. There was a one-legged homeless guy, and he seemed like he was sane. And he was talking to himself. Maybe he was a little crazy. But I would be talking to myself, too, if I had one fucking leg standing next to a stop sign, right? What else are you going to do? There's nobody else there. So him I gave money to. And I was actually joking to myself when I gave him the money and I drove away. I go, all right, there's, there's my good deed for the day. Hey, let's go hit a rub and tug. <laughs> rub and tug. I can't believe fucking people go to those places, man. Now, don't you worry that the cops are going to show up any second? You know, you're lying there with a the fucking Woody, right? With a little fucking Woodrow Wilson, right? Some girl fucking giving you a little handy and all of a sudden, everybody get down to the ground. You know, you're like, ah, oh, shit, right? And what are you going to do? Say it was legal. You know how to will that hard on to go away before that fucking dude comes in and sees you with half a stiffy? You know? I swear to God, it hangs like that. I was in here. I had a problem with my shoulder, man. They're going to arrest you. Is you fucking half naked. Bring you down to the jail. You're already ready to get fucked. You don't even have any clothes on. <laughs> you got oil all over your body. The fuck is wrong with you? So anyways, June 5th, I'll be in Albany, New York. And uh, June 17th, I'll be in Newark. Newark fucking New Jersey. At the uh, New Jersey fucking Performance Arts Center for the uh, the fucking cocksuckers there. Um, you know, it really made me happy the other day. I was watching the uh, NHL channel. Obviously, they were talking about how the Bruins could potentially get the number one seed in the East. Unfucking believable the job that Claude Julian has done. And I'll tell you something right now, Dan Shaughnessy. You remember last year when you were calling for his fucking head and saying maybe he stayed here too long? You owe him an, uh, You should write an apology article. Unbelievable how these fucking sports writers, because they got nothing else to write, will we'll try to run out, run out of town a fucking coach who brings us our first Stanley Cup in almost 40 fucking years. Why would you do that? Jesus fucking Christ, why would you do that? All right, let's uh, let's read some of the uh, the questions here for this week. Oh, we got an update. I love when there's an update. Remember last week, the uh, the granny fucking water. Remember that story? All right, here we got an update. Hey there, old Billy fucking water. I got an update for you on this one. Uh, the story has good news and bad news. All right, so last last week, for those of you who didn't listen, I'll give you a little recap. There was some kid, uh, you know, he was, he's basically, he's engaged. He's getting married in six weeks. So he's over his fiance's house, his, his future in-law's house. 
her fucking parents. That's all I'm trying to say, right? So they're playing some card game, and evidently they're down to the final hand, and he has uh, the card's called Granny Water. I don't know what the game is or whatever. Some people sent me pictures of the card. The game does exist, but it's a really high point card or whatever. And he was laying down. Ah, fuck, I'm yawning. Sorry. He was laying down his card last. And basically when he laid it down, he was going to do the old fucking right there, Fred. I won the game. And uh, he had the granny water card. And I guess in the end of the game, it's probably, you get it, you hold on to it, and you play it at a crucial point. So everybody's sitting there as everybody's laying the cards down, waiting to see who's going to fucking lay it down. So this kid fucking, it's finally his turn. He lays it down to be like, you know, like hitting the last second three. I just won. And because he listens to the podcast, instead of saying, I got the granny water card, he goes, he goes, look, he goes, it's all fucking great. Now he goes, it's granny fucking water and just screamed it to his in-laws. Okay. Who never heard this guy curse before and do not listen to this podcast. So they just stared at him like, what, what was that? What is my daughter marrying? Like, he just completely screwed the whole fucking thing up. So he's asking me for advice. Should he bring it up? Should he not bring it up? All right, now you guys are caught up. Here you go. He says, the story has good news and bad news. The good news is my fiance's parents were super cool about the whole thing. Super duper. Um, I, I bit the bullet and waited until we went over f- uh, for game night again last night. I apologized, of course, and they said they initially just thought... Why am I yawning like this? Fuck. They initially thought it was really odd for me to yell like that without knowing, without them knowing the context. But once it was explained, my fiance texted them about it. It was no big deal. It was a huge relief. We played the game again. And every time someone played that card, they did the whole granny water thing minus the fucking in the middle. Okay, cool. He goes, so my embarrassment will be immortalized. Uh, the bad news is that I mentioned that you read the letter on the podcast. Oh, no. You know what? You're one of those guys, dude. You just like, you just like stepping and shit. He goes, naturally, they wanted to listen to it. I thought it wasn't a big deal because they lived through the story and your commentary was hilarious. I warned them about the explicit nature of your podcast and that there were plenty of fucks throughout. The fact that you did the granny water thing before it was even brought up, uh, was perfect. Everyone thought the story was hilarious. That is, until the P.S. Uh, if you recall, I may or may have not called Hillary Clinton a cunt. Oh, Jesus. That's right, you did. He goes, yeah, I know I'm a dumbass, Bill. My fiancé just turned to me and said, did you write that? Uh... He said, my fiance turned to to me and said, did you write that with that look on her face? I knew I was fucked. So freckles, I did the only thing I could. I said, oh, sorry about that. I didn't write it. Bill's email screener guy did. (laughs) Andrew did. He picks the emails each week, then writes the little opening line pun, and then sometimes throws in a PS to make them more entertaining. Well, now, why would you write this? Because if they listen to this, you're fucked. And you know what, dude? I have no sympathy for you. So here we go. He goes, they bought it, so we just listened to the rest, and we're laughing again by the end. So I threw Andrew under the bus on that one. I'm going to repeat my only good move from the last story and just shut the fuck up about it forever. In the end, all is well. Thanks for reading it out on the podcast. It seemed to help smooth it over. No worries. Just tell him not to listen to this one. He goes, by the way, um... I just bought tickets to your show, and I'm not going to say where the show is in case anybody's figuring out who the fuck this is. It's the week after my wedding, and my fiancé slash wife by that point is coming to. I'd love to meet you in person. Thanks, and go fuck yourself. Um, All right. Well, you know, I'll be hanging out after in Iowa. Just scream out. Oh, I just said where it was. (laughs) Oh, well, you're fucked. Granny Water. Scream it out, and I'll fucking say hello to you. All right, now everybody's going to do that there. All right, girlfriend leaving. Cleo, relax, buddy. Look how cold your nose is. It's usually not cold at night. You got a little gas left in the tank, huh? You want to go? Oh, I okay, I got it. I'm not going to say the whole sentence. I will. 
I'm going to take you know who, you know where, when I'm done with this. All right? Cleo, go lay down, buddy. Could you please lay down? I don't have it in my heart to yell at you here. All right, could, could you lay down, you fucking bastard? All right, I love you too. Get out of here. Go on. Go on. Please. Can you lay down, please? Cleo. Yeah. Yeah, and step on all my shit as you go over there. Just go lay down. Jesus. Dog whisperer, I am not. Um... Oh, by the way, how about those fucking cunts at Wounded Warriors? How much money did I give them? If they're actual pieces of shit over there and they didn't give that fucking money to wounded troops, you know? Can I sue them to get the money back and then just give it to the fucking people they were allegedly going to help? I, I am really just, I'm done. I'm done with fucking charities. I'm fucking done with them. I just am, you know? I'm going Donald Trump on this one. I've seen two or three bad ones and now I'm judging all of them. Fuck them. St. Jude, I'm sticking with them. Okay, and if they end up turning, if they're bad, then fuck all of them. I'm just doing what I, I'm doing what I did the other day. Drove up to somebody with one leg at a stoplight, observed that they weren't fucking wasted as much as I could tell, and there you go. You know, even if they were, I'd be drinking too if I had one leg, right? Standing at a fucking stop sign. Um, I don't know what the stop sign has to do with it. What was the traffic light bill? Well, then you know, maybe I have some yogurt. Um, girlfriend leaving for religious mission. Hey, Billy Ballbag, my girlfriend and I are both college students, and although we haven't been together for too long, I could tell she is special in the way when you meet the one you just know. She's the person I have, she's the best person I have ever met. Kind, funny, intelligent, and on top of that, just drop dead gorgeous. Well, Jesus, lock that down, dude. Um, If things seem to be too good to true, what? If things seem too good to be true. Jesus Christ. I have some, I got to have some form of fucking mild dyslexia. Or I'm even dumber than I thought. It's a rough one. Uh, uh, things seem too good to be true. They are. She's Mormon. Oh, jeez. And she's leaving for her mission in July. If you don't know um, Mormons, I don't give a shit about Mormons. And just anybody who's actively religious. You know, to the point it, it, it affects the decisions they make in life. Other than basic shit like, you know, don't throw a rock at that guy because you wouldn't want him to do it to you. You know, I, I'm, I'm with that. But, you know, when you start forming other opinions on your fucking religion, uh, I don't know. It starts to get a little, uh, a little, uh, Scientola Christi, Judy, Buddha, fuckingism, whatever, all of them. Throw them all in one fucking Muslonian. Just uh, a big fucking pot. You can stick it all in a fucking pot, right? Yeah, there you go. Shove it in the microwave, right? Turn it on and don't shut it on. All right, she's a Mormon, and she's leaving for her mission in July. If you don't know, Mormons are a type of Christian. I didn't know that. And they send missionaries around the world to convert people into their religion. And she's getting sent to Zimbabwe. Fucking Zimbabwe. They leave for two years, have to pay for everything themselves, and aren't allowed to contact home the entire time. Why aren't they allowed to contact home the entire time? That's fucking weird. If she goes, not only would that be the end of us, but it seriously hurts chances of her future career aspiration. We both want to become doctors. I'm an atheist, but I've recently found myself praying to Jesus that she doesn't actually go because if and when she leaves, that will be the end of it. I don't know what to do. Should I break things off now? Should I try and convince her not to go? Waiting is not an option for me because we'd be completely different people by the time she gets back. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Um, I don't know, dude. I'm starting to think maybe she isn't the one for you. If you're just going to, you know, if you have to debate telling her not, should I just break it off or tell her not to go? I mean, I think if she really loved this woman, you'd, you'd be going, I'm just going to talk to her until I'm blue in the face. And tell her not to go. And then even if she went, you'd be thinking like, well, maybe, you know, you'd have a ray of light going. Well, maybe to two years, I don't know, if we agree to fucking cool it for two years, you know? It's only two years when you look at the rest of your life, you're kind of like, yeah, we'd be two completely different people. Uh, should I break it up now? I don't know. Yeah, look, she wants to go to Zimbabwe, let her, you know, to spread the fucking word of uh, whatever the fuck they're doing there. Yeah, let her go. 
just, you know, if, what, what do you, listen, if somebody wants to go somewhere to go do something, what are you, you going to tell them not to go? Go ahead. You know, I, I, go ahead, go, go spread the fucking dumb shit they put in your head and go, go, go spread it on the other side of the world. It's poor fucking Zimbabwe peep, Zimbabwean people. Now, you went fucking Zimbabwe, and I was assuming you meant because it's so far away you couldn't visit her. Let's see what's going on in Zimbabwe right now. Zimbabwe. That's exactly how it should be spelled. Z-I-M-B-A-B-W-E. I'd be such a great fucking speller if everything was spelt like Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Z-I-M-B-A-B-W-E. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. We'll be converting you to Mormon. Do, do, do. You got to get two years of your life to fucking, for what? All right, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a beautiful country in southern Africa that is known for its dramatic, wait, 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 wait. come on. Oh, this is the government, this is the government website, so this is all the propaganda here. It's absolutely beautiful. You can have your wallet fucking taped to your chest. No one will take it. Everybody's wonderful down here. Everybody's welcome. Please come down and spend all your fucking money, you know, if you don't mind. Zimbabwe was voted uh, the number one place in Zimbabwe to go three years in a row. Wow. Jesus. Look at that fuck. That puts Niagara Falls to shame. Holy shit. Zimbabwe is a beautiful country in southern Africa that is known for its dramatic landscapes, its diverse wildlife, sea cobras and tigers, and its hardworking people. Home to the great Zimbabwe Monument, the mighty Victorian Falls, and the majestic Eastern Highlands. The country also boasts of world-class national parks in which a variety of animals, including the Big Five, can be found. The Big Five! What the fuck are the Big Five? Big Five. I gotta go lion. Who's your Big Five? It's like the Chris Rock movie, Top Five. Give me a Big Five. I'd say the Big Five. Uh, You gotta go lion. Tiger, elephant, doubt a doubt, right? That's like Montana, Brady, and Johnny Unitas. The third one, you never know, right? Whatever. They're, they're in everybody's top five if you know anything about football, right? All right, lion, tiger, elephant, hippos, rhinos, giraffes are big, gorillas. Those are some big motherfuckers. Hang on a second. Now I got to look up Big Five. See, this, this is how you do it. Well, you know I'm going to get the sports club. Big Five sporting good. Big Five animals in Africa. All right. In Africa, the Big Five game animals are the African lion. Bang! The African elephant. I like it says African, you know, like what? As opposed to what? The Rhode Island one? The one at the fucking zoo? The Cape Buffalo. Oh. The African leopard. Ah. And the white slash black rhinoceros. All right, so I got three out of right. I said hippo, rhino. Well, where the fuck's the hippo? Big five game. All right, in Africa, the big five game animals are American. Okay, the lion, the elephant, the buffalo, the leopard, and the rhinoceros. Oh, is this the thing that dentists pay to fly over and go fucking shoot these things? All right. All right. So there you go. So we learned a little something here. That's the big five. Uh, the largest of these are the National Park in the West and the something else Trans Frontier Park in the South. Has a total area of 390. All right. Let's get to the, let's get to the real questions. Um, Americans welcomed... In Zimbabwe, did we do anything? Did, did, did the upper 1% in this country piss them off? All right. Americans in Zimbabwe. Da, 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 da. Are you looking for fellow Americans in Zimbabwe? No, I'm not looking for a fucking pen pal. Six things I had wrong. This is the last thing I read about Zimbabwe here. All right. Six things I had wrong about traveling to Zimbabwe. Look at those elephants. I fucking love those things. I cannot believe people kill those things. How could you kill an elephant? I couldn't kill any of those fucking things. Um, all right, the top five things. Six things I had wrong about traveling to Zimbabwe and one I had right. Number one, Zimbabwe is dangerous. 
Uh, at Matador, we believe most travel advisories and American perceptions of overseas destinations being dangerous are way overblown. I enjoy visiting the city. Da, 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 da. The big cities, um, the big cities are the mo- are where the most violent crime is concentrated, like in the United States. It wasn't a surprise that then that Victoria Falls, as well as the couple national parks we visited, felt it just about as safe and as friendly as any place can get. In fact, Victoria Falls has such a small town feel that other journalists joked it had the vibe of a U.S. national park in the off season. All right, cool. Zimbabwe's wildlife has all been wiped out. This was a big one for me. I love seeing wildlife. This is making me want to go there. Three, hyperinflation will make buying things a total hassle. After seeing years of new coverage, hyperinflation, I was expecting blah, 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 blah. I'd have to carry around bricks of $10, $10 billion notes to buy a bunch of beer. But the currency of Zimbabwe has become so worthless, they've retired it completely, and the country now operates on a mix of foreign currency, including the South Africa, okay? Beyond the wildlife, there's not much to do or see. There's rafting, bungee jumping, micro light flying over Victory Fall, fishing, swimming. All right, well, what the fuck did you get right? I'm not reading all this shit. Look at this fucking video. Swimming in Victoria Falls? Get the fuck out of here. This is this thing that looks like it's bigger than Niagara Falls. No fucking way! So basically, the water isn't flowing fast enough that these fucking guys... Okay, I got to put a, send a link to this video. Who is the absolute fucking psycho that figured out you could do that? Dude, if you just saw the pasty, fat fucking white dude who just jumped in there. You know what's funny? He's there with two fucking... Two black guys, man. It'd be funny if they grabbed him and threw him over. That was for slavery. <laughs> But I didn't do it! All right, let me, uh... All right, I got a copy of that. Jesus Christ, what a fucking lunatic. There's no no way. There's no fucking way. No fucking way. All right, let's get back to the uh, the things here. All right. Um, where am I? All right, Tinder. Oh, Billy, let's read some emails for the week. Uh, I hooked up with this girl I met on Tinder. The first in years. I'm not a bad-looking guy. I'm not a bad-looking guy. I think I just suck at small talk over or over text. Anywho, this girl is 21. I didn't expect it to go anywhere. After we matched up, we ended up hooking up. She's really cool. We've hung out a few times since. My friend and his girlfriend started saying that was gross. Uh, I am 30 years old. Now I know my friend is being lame because his girlfriend was there, but gross, not at all. So I let them have their ignorant opinions. Then I dropped the facts on them. She looks more like she's 24. Dude, this really isn't helping you. I look like I'm 25. That's also not helping you. She took extra classes to graduate college early and is already accepted into medical school. Still not helping you. She speaks four languages fluently. Oh, I see what you're saying. She's not a dumb fuck. She knows what she's doing. I don't mean hello and goodbye. She can carry on full-on conversations in Mandarin, French, and Italian, as well as English, of course. She has much better table manners than both of them. Oh, you said that? Wow, you just torched the whole friendship. I pointed this out to my friend's girlfriend who didn't have a napkin on her lap and her elbows were on the table and pointed that very fact out to her as well. Also, I mentioned that when me and this girl met for a drink, she put her napkin on her lap before she bought her drink to her mouth, uh, which would have hovered over her lap. Awareness levels maximum. Uh, 21, who gives a fuck? I like to think I'm right and that I made a good point, but I need the opinion of your honor, Billy Burr. Uh, yeah, fuck them. You're 30, she's 21, who gives a shit? Good for you. You're fucking crushing it. She's a fucking adult. And, uh, she's not a dope. You didn't roof her. And they're two miserable fucks in a relationship. All right, we got food coming out of the side of their mouth. Carry on! All right, my kid wants to play football. Hey, Billy Belichick. Bella, Bella Lick. Um, I'm a uh, huge football fan. Watch every week, yada, yada, yada. My kid is seven and loves it too. He plays baseball and basketball and is really fast. We play catch with the football in the yet. And he's really fast, which has given him the desire to be a wide receiver. Granted, it's not the worst pounder you can get on the field. I don't want him playing football. Uh, he's a great athlete, but I'm not one of those delusional dads who thinks he's going pro 
in whatever he does. He's not small, but definitely not the biggest of his age group. How do I not sound like a cranky old man or worried old mother and explain to him how it's not worth it? Should I just show him footage from a 30 for 30 to scare the shit out of him? Oh, man, dude, that is such a um, contemporary question, relevant question, whatever. You know, um, I would actually defer this to the Internet, believe it or not. And then you have to use your own judgment as to whether you're listening to somebody who is informed and, or somebody who isn't. Can you, can you do like a middle ground and maybe hockey? Maybe you can get him into hockey. I guess you, you, you'd have to like hockey if you don't like hockey. Um, cause it would have the physical aspects of it, but, um, those guys don't just don't fucking slam into each other every play. Um, you know what, dude, I don't know how to bring that up. I would just be honest with them and just say, listen, I don't want to seem like a cranky old man. I don't want to seem like a worried mother, like you just said, but, um, I'm really worried about the long-term effects of you playing football. And I would even say long-term effects. Talk to him like an adult. Just say, yeah, I, I, I am worried that, you know, you if you get hit the wrong way, God forbid, people get paralyzed, people die, people have fucking, don't say fucking, people have brain injuries. I would go down that road and just, I would just say to the kid, your concerns. And if he really wants to fucking play, then, you know, you just do what Peyton did. You just get some roids sent to your house. You put them in your wife's name and you get this kid. You, you let him do a cycle right before the season starts. And you let him kick the fuck out of somebody else's kid and not yours. Right? There you go. Okay. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. Obviously, the first thing I said, I would, I would seek more information on that and figure out how you do it in the best way. All right. Peyton, my house, man. Dearest Bill, my house needs painting. It has about six years. It's been about six years since it's been painted. We moved in four years ago. I've painted a house before, but my wife thinks I'm going to fuck it up and or it will take too long. You know what? I'm with her already. Uh, I've been telling her that I'll save, uh, it'll save thousands of dollars. She says that's not the point. She's right. It's not entirely the point. I make good money. I just want to paint the house. It's my first house, and I feel the need to do something to leave my mark on it. Literally and figuratively speaking, um, I'll t- it'll take me about three weeks to do the whole house, not working every day, but three, four days a week. I have a neighbor who's going to be home from college who I've introduced to music and he's never heard. Oh, listen to music. He's never heard. So it's a great excuse to give the kid a few bucks while introducing him to early Soundgarden and Jane's addiction. Uh, she started th- bringing things up like, well, what if it starts raining She's got nothing left on this one. I have to paint my house. It's not a manly thing. It's not to prove a point. It's taking pride and ownership. Thoughts on this? I say you listen to your wife. Dude, you want to do something? Fucking, you finish your garage. Do something like that, okay? Do something in there where it's a, par- a room that she doesn't have to fucking deal with. Just have some pros come over there. Have them knock it out. Have them charge you through the fucking nose. And you sit inside drinking a fucking beer. All right? There's other shit that you can do on the house. Um, you know, I, I just, painting a fucking house, is that's a big one, dude. That is a big one. I understand that you want to do it. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I'm with your wife on this one, dude, you know. You already got a fucking job, okay? You're making good money. Pay somebody to do it, all right? There's a bunch of shit on my house that I started to do, and I just started thinking, you know what? I'm making a good living. Fuck this. Why don't I have a pro come over? I can do it. I can figure it out. I was patching up holes in walls. I was learning how to do that shit. You know, I was fucking fixing the J-trap under my sink and doing all of that fucking crap. I did, learned all of that shit in my last apartment. Then I got to the house, and it's like, all right, well, I can do this, or... I can have a pro come over here and do it and do it fucking right. Okay. Now I'm, I'm speaking for myself here. My house was fucking wall to wall, wall, floor to ceiling, inside and out. Do it yourself fucking hacks. All right. And I wasn't going to carry that fucking baton anymore. Everything that I have had done on my house has been done by fucking professionals. And my house is as much as I bitch about it. Um, it's 70% the shit at this point. It really is. Once I get this garage done and then I got, you know, my kitchen's fucked up. 
Don't even get me started with all the exterior doors and windows, okay? And the wood rot and some of the other shit I have to deal with. But generally speaking, like, this fucking place is solid. And um, I don't know, dude. Fuck that, dude. You don't go up a fucking ladder. You know what I mean? Mixing the goddamn paint, doing all of that bullshit. Um, I would just, I would, yeah. Just just pay for it. Just pay for it and just say, this is what you do. Don't just do it. Just don't do what your wife says. Get something out of it, all right? Be like, all right, you know what? I thought about it. I don't agree with it, but I know that you would feel better if somebody else did it, okay? So I am going to hire a professional company to paint the house. And she'll be like, okay, good. I'll be like, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. However, because I am doing that, I am going to redo the garage. And the garage is going to be a place where me and my friends, we play poker and we smoke cigars once a week. I'm going to have my own fridge in there. There's going to be a lock on the door that you do not have a key for. When you see um, exotic women walking in and out of that, you are not to ask questions. It's just understood, right? You just say crazy shit like that, right? Over the fucking top. And then she's done laughing. Then you say what the fuck you really want. It will pale in comparison to fucking exotic women walking in and out of your garage. And you'll be fucking in. So I would think about what else you want. All right? And at the end of the fucking day, you're going to get something that you want. And somebody else is going to pay you how, paint, uh, paint your house. I think you're going to win. Personally speaking, that's what I think. All right? And you know what? That's the podcast for this week, motherfuckers. Um, thank you for listening, as always. And I'm really excited about all these dates that I have coming up. And... Uh, I, I cannot fucking wait to go to Iowa. I'm so excited about St. Louis. Some of the great fucking sports fans I've ever met in my life are in St. Louis, and God knows they got enough Budweiser's. Long Beach is fucking uh, the goddamn motherfucking uh, Richard Pryor gig. Riverside, Riverside, California. I fucking you know when I was learning how to fly, I had to I had to land there when I did the the fucking French Valley flight. I had to fly to Riverside, then out to French Valley, and back to Long Beach. Um, Shit, I might fly over there. That would be awesome. Um, Ames, Iowa. Obviously, cannot wait to go to there. Orlando. I haven't been there in a minute. Jacksonville, Florida. Last time I was there, I went to a gun sh- gun range and shot fucking guns with silencers. You think I'm not going to do that again? Portland, Maine, my old stomping grounds. Albany, New York. Um, Newark, New Jersey. These are all places. I love all those places. I can't wait to get out there. I've been working my ass off of my act. If you come out, I'm going to make you laugh your fucking ass off, Okay. So if you can make it, I would really appreciate it. All right. And I'm actually trying to think of a tour name. If you can come up with a name for it, you know, because these dates, I'm in Canada. I'm in North America. I'm in fucking, you know, well, Canada is North America. I'm in the United States of America, right? I'm on the East Coast. I'm in the Midwest. I'm in the South. I can't think of a name for the tour. I don't know why I have to name the tour, but my agent says I got to come up with a name for it. So I'm thinking the checking in on your tour. I don't don't know what. If you guys got any ideas, just tweet them to me. Uh, at Bill Burr, whatever the, I don't even know what my Twitter is. You know what? I don't even know what it is. So whatever. If you got time to look it up, (laughs) send it to me. If you don't, I understand. All right, go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you on Thursday.